let, let me just talk to you, okay? Just forget the other two. If you know the language, just go get the architect. Yeah, very good. Get off the flipping screen. Hey, Deb, what's going on? Look, no waste of time. Just go get your architect, man. You're, 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 I'm sorry. I said, man, I'm so sorry, person. Um, just go get it. You'll you'll do fine, especially if you've been working with the cloud for a while. You understand the language. You understand the basic concepts. You already know that certification. In fact, if you have been working with it for a few months, I would almost challenge you, just go take the, CC, uh, the, the CPE for the fun of it. Just knock it out so you've got it under your belt. But go get the ARC Associate. That's where you probably need it. As you can see from that snippet, we had a very exciting conversation with Brooks Seahorn, AWS expert and i &E instructor on this episode of the Cyber and Security Stream. In here, we cover topics such as cloud security, three of the biggest mistakes that everyone makes in their cloud environment, and just general cloud career advice. I hope you enjoy the rest of the stream. Remember to subscribe and like this video on YouTube if you enjoyed the content and really help us with our visibility to other professionals who could benefit from our mission of bringing the most relevant and best cybersecurity conversations right to you. Also, make sure that you tune into our Twitch channels every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Friday morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for those folks who are on different time zones and especially overseas. We're the only Twitch channel that brings you the most relevant pen testing, blue teaming, and overall cybersecurity conversations in the industry. And always remember, whether you're on the red side or the blue side or still deciding, Keep learning. <laughs> yeah, you do. Anyway, anyway, so so this guy Brooks that I brought on, um, he challenged me on LinkedIn. It started on Instagram, then went on to LinkedIn. It was probably the most innovative. It was probably the most innovative way that anybody has suckered their way onto this stream that I think I've ever seen. He, uh, he's got the, if you haven't seen it, hit exclamation point guest. We're going go to have copycats now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everyone's oh, yeah. taking notes from chat. Oh yeah. If you want to figure out how to get a, get a, a personalized asked response on how to get on this stream, hit exclamation point guest, go find Brooks's LinkedIn and go see what he did to get on this stream. So, uh, so, so I'll, I'll leave it to that. If everybody wants to go see what it is, but, um, I'm super excited. He came from Amazon. Um, and, and so he's, he's. He's got some interesting stories to tell about what it's like to be on the inside of Amazon. And, and on top of that, of course, he's just a, a genius when it comes to cloud security. Um, I can say that I've, I've known him now for probably like two months now, and, and he's, he's, he's incredibly smart. Um, not just cloud security, just all things cloud, anything cloud. I mean, if it's, I mean, he can tell you like when it's going to rain, like that's how much he knows about the cloud. Um, I guess I should I should stop talking about him and just 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 you know really just bring him in because I've I've been teasing him up a little bit here a little bit so so without further ado um, I do want to introduce uh, oh sorry sorry oh that's your double okay no okay Are, is your audio working oh your video is working okay we don't have to use your double please we don't have to use please your double tell me okay you can hear me okay yeah I can hear you all right good please tell me you can hear oh. Okay. I was just gonna say after that introduction, <laughs> speaking of old guy Wednesday, remember that commercial they said don't don't ever let him see you sweat? Well after that introduction, <laughs> Lord. I, I just <sighs> I can't I can't I can't help it, Brooks. Like I'm serious. Like like I just want everybody to know up until we hit go live, this was gonna be Brooks' stand in. Like we were gonna have to use <laughs> this as a Brooks stand-in because of camera issues tonight. So so we're grateful, Brooks, that you're able to, to figure out how to work a webcam. Well, it, it, it's it's not cloud, man. If it was a cloud cam, it would have been up and running. I would have been in 4K. <laughs> but this is some sort of Canon beats me how it works. No clue. So, yeah, this is the best we can do. Get my old, gli old guy glasses on so I can see. I'm drinking tea tonight, gentlemen. Good, good for you. So, so let me, mm. let me, let me do, let me do this, Brooks. <sighs> let me do this. Um, I'm, I'm gonna put you in the center stage. Can you introduce Ugh. yourself and talk to like the audience about you and tell them just like generally how awesome you are? Well, I don't want to hit the awesome part, but I'll, I'll be happy to introduce myself. Hey, everyone. I'm Brooks, Brooks Seahorn. 
Um, I have been in technology now for a couple of decades. I started back in about 95. Um, uh, worked my way up like a lot of people going, you know, being a programmer, being a developer, becoming a senior programmer, a senior developer, moving into management, doing a lot of work in the Department of Defense, which is a great place, by the way. And again, thank you, veterans, for all you do for us. Um, for, you know, to really learn and to find out a lot about the importance of security, because it's one of the biggest targets in the world. So you get to learn security. Um, from there, uh, just got into bigger and bigger programs. And honest to goodness, Neil, this is what happened. Um, on a goof, I applied for the job at Amazon. I, it was a complete goof. I was like, no way they're going to hire me. All this DOD background, they don't <laughs> care. And um, literally it went from, and for anybody who's ever heard of what the AWS interview process is like, it is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it is not easy. It is not easy. There's an NDA around the freaking interview and I would never give it away because I will say in all honesty, it's brilliant. Is is I know I've heard a lot of people say people come away crying, upset, and I'm sorry for those of you who go through that, but I will tell you what they're doing is utterly brilliant at the end of the day. Thing was, I went through it and uh, the position I got was going to be 75% travel. And then um, I, I sat down with my wife and she said, okay, honey, they offer it to you. I said, yeah. And, but there's a problem. It's going to be 75% travel. She said, okay, what does it pay? And I told her, she just looked at me, she said, and you said, yes, correct. <laughs> and that was the end of it. Off I go to Amazon. <laughs> and I will say that to go from the DOD environment to AWS, it was an utter culture shock to go from, you know, did you do your weekly activity report? Did you put your time in when you left today? All that stuff to just run. That's the best way I can describe it. Just flip and run. And, um, you know, you're in the air all the time. We actually, we were in the air so much we made traveling a science. I was telling you earlier, Neil, we actually had a class called uh, Travel Like a Boss that we used to teach. <laughs> and it was everything from credit cards to luggage to airline. Like, because when you travel that much, you need to get good at it or you're going to hate life. You're going to yeah. hate everything. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I did that for three years started looking for new opportunities and then I kind of ended up at this company. Uh, what's the name of it again, Neil? Can you <laughs> I, name it for me? I, I think it's a three letter acronym, not the NSA. It is. No, 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 no. I've had, uh, I'm, I'm good with NSA <laughs> and CIA. They, I'm good. You're good. No, I came to work for i &E. Yeah, I came to work for an i &E, and I can tell you that one of the things that got, gets me really excited about this is that, um, and, and matter of fact, I was watching the chat and somebody asked, what was the one thing I would change about cloud if I could change it right now? And it would actually be training about multi-cloud because it's not just that there, nobody's hardly doing it. Very few people are so, explaining how you can connect Azure to AWS, to a GCP, to OCI. I wish that was spoken about much, much more because if you look at 85% of the companies out there right now that are using cloud, they're multi-vendor. They are not single vendor. They're multi-flipping vendor. Now, you've got to be careful with what the companies are telling you because here's what they'll tell you. If you look at like any of Andy Jazzy's um, presentations, he'll say things like the amount of workload in the cloud is only like 10% of what could be in the cloud. You have to go, oh, wow. wait a minute. That sounds wow. like, wow, that sounds really low. Is, yeah. is that true? He's talking about everything, man. He's talking about the fact that now with like AWS, you can have your work, uh, your office automation. You can have your phone system. All of that stuff can be put into the cloud. So if yeah. you look at that possibility, then yeah, sure, sure. Less than ten percent in the cloud right now. Absolutely. So is, is, is that a good enough introduction? I, I My think, jaw just started moving. No, no, I, no, I think that's I, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. But since you started on like the the ten percent thing on on you know mm -hmm. being in the cloud, I want to talk just really quickly, just even more about maybe some other cloud trends. And kind of get your take on them. And again, I want to remind chat, right? Um, obviously, we typically, you know, are, are very heavy focused on cybersecurity. Obviously, we brought Brooks on just from a AWS perspective, from his cloud expertise. If you think of anything cybersecurity or just cloud in general, drop those into chat, and we will get those up there as quickly as possible. And this was this is obviously by request of a lot of the community. Getting back over Brooks, kind of a little bit to some of the cloud trending stuff. 
you and I have talked before, and 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 I saw this trend as I was prepping for this interview with you, and I and I knew that this would be something that you'd love to talk about. But one of the reports that I read from Flexera had mentioned that on the percentage of cloud spend, seventy only seventy percent of of uh, users of cloud efficiently spend their money when allocating cloud resources. And I know that's a hot button topic for you. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. It's a big hot button topic. And let me tell you something about this, Neil. It's a huge deal. If you start looking at the separation between the folks that are doing really, really well in the cloud and the people that when you say we can't use curse words. I don't use curse words. <laughs> I'll say this suck in the cloud. First of all, that gap between them is spreading. It's really spreading. And it's because the folks that are doing well are really diving in. And I'm seeing more and more in those best providers, something now called financial operations. It is a team that literally sits on top of their cloud budget and watches it. And the reason people miss this is really simple. How for how many decades, man, were we you'd buy the server, mm -hmm. you pay for it, mm -hmm. you may, you may, you know, expense it out and stuff like that to try to bring down your taxes or whatever, but you bought the thing and that was it. Now we're moving into this space where you can just grab it, a server, set it, set it and forget it, it totally. And and they never thought about set it again. It, forget literally. It. Yeah, exactly. Literally. Well, not only do they forget about it, man, but here's some of the other stuff. There's little things they forget all the time. Like this, this one blows away a lot of people about AWS. Um, if you use something called an elastic IP address, where it's a, it's a concrete IP address, it's a real thing, but it's elastic. So you could uh, attach it to the server, attach it to the server, stuff like that. You get charged if you don't use it, but retain it. Mm. And it messes with a lot of people's mind. It's like, wait a minute, I'm not using it. Yeah, you're right. You're just squatting on an IP address. Shame on you. You should have released it. Is what you should have done. So you get charged for it. Another one. Oh, dude, I will never forget sitting in Tempe, Arizona, explicitly telling this group, do not run the trusted advisor during my class. So, so what? What's the trust? Anything, what's, the, what's the trusted advisor? I'm going to get to that. Yeah. Okay. Do not run the trusted advisor. What it does is this. Inside AWS, it will scan your resources and it'll look across security, it'll look across operations, and it'll look across cost. And I told them, do not run this in class because what's going to happen is you're going to see cost and somebody's going to end up walking out of the room. <laughs> sure enough, in the very back of the freaking classroom, in the back of the class, because I saw him when he did it, I saw this guy, and, 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 and due respect, I won't say what he said, it was the S word, but I literally just heard, holy s word and it was loud and somebody spun around and said he did it brooks he ran it and we went back <laughs> to you and this and everybody on your stream what you're hearing is first of all let me scope the company for you it was an energy company out of canada okay you probably haven't heard of them i never heard of them okay they were sort of a mid-cap energy company so they're using a, a decent amount of resources i can tell you a fun thing that they're doing with uh, cloud as well um he discovered they had, brace yourselves, $18,000 in wasted storage costs wow. every month. Wow. That they every were month? Using. Every wow. month. They were blowing $18,000 on elastic block storage. Wow. Absolutely incredible. And he was like, I have to get up. And the thing was, is that, you know, the reason he had to get up was he was the cloud guy and he knew what was going to happen when he made the call and said, um, um, I think I found a cost savings. And then what I had to tell them was 18 grand. They're like, what have you been doing, man? So that's one of but, the but biggest this is, this things, is, this man. Is, uh, this, is also, we, this is also for a company. We should put it in perspective. It's a company where 18 grand a month. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Oh, well, but it went, on, it it went un uh, unchecked, though, for a while. Yeah. Clearly. Yes. Yeah, it ran unchecked. It's the same thing like um, there. there's a, a story I've heard about a particular company. The developers were running wild, doing ever what they wanted to do. That's us developers. I am a developer, just having fun with cloud. They left some services up and running and forgot about it. This company's run rate per uh, month was about twenty five thousand. Uh, when they got that end of the month bill, it was somewhere around a hundred. Wow. And yeah, it, well, and and you know, here's one of the cool things about AWS. Um, they made a call is what they did. And they said, we have screwed up. And AWS did a lot to help them mitigate that bill. They were really cool about it. So I'd say to anybody, if you've got a stupid bill that gets out of control, call your cloud provider. They can be really cool help in situations like that. 
go, hey, we see what you did. We see it all the time. But this whole thing, uh, Neil, about financial operations is becoming real. It's almost like a secure. No, it's better than that. I have told everybody that I've spoken to about cloud. When you go into cloud, I don't care what your flipping role is. Database, architecture, yeah. engineering, developer. You're putting on two more hats. You're going to put on security and you're going to put on cost operations, whether you like it or not. And why is this? Back in the day, you and I know this as well as anybody who's been in the DOD. We had no idea where a lot of the cost stuff was. That was oh, somebody no. Oh, no. over there and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Just, uh, that, that crap's over there. Yeah. Yeah. You have no excuse now. You have no excuse. You can go into, uh, I think it's AWS, it's calculator.aws. You can start putting together the freaking budget, man. Like figuring out what but is something's going to cost. But, but real quick, real quick on that, though. I mean, like, I, I know it's easy for us to say, like, you can go do that. How is that taught? Like, do, do, is, is that a commonly taught thing to teach people how to do monetary calculations for their cloud instances? No, not at all. And it's one of the challenges we have in the space. There's just not a lot of training on that subject. And here's the other, oh, see, I'm, I'm supposed to do something dramatic tonight, Neil, remember? Well, no, no, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. You, you let me, I'll, okay. I'll okay. leave, well, let me, well, let me. I'm, 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 I'm pointing at this, everybody. We didn't forget, and I'm pointing right back oh. at it because of that thing right there. It's not, Neil, you're pointing at something really, really important because it's not just have they been trained to do it, but have they been trained to hand the ancillary effect of being in the cloud? It's not enough just to say, oh, it's going to cost us this much to store it. But what if something happens? And you need to move that data mm -hmm. out of that cloud provider. Now you're in a whole new place, man. You're in a whole new place. And I'm going to tell an awesome story about that, too. So, no, there's not a lot of training on it. There's a lot of let's figure, us out, figure that out as we go along. I think AWS just implemented a course for this uh, just to talk about it a little bit. You can find some knowledge on it. <laughs> but honest to goodness, man, I have seen organization after organization after organization they're just figuring it out as they go so, along so, 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 they so, weren't ready for this so, so brooks uh so brooks we got our, our first question in from the community uh the, you know dying <laughs> okay. dying to know here incoming i and e exclusive course <laughs> <laughs> uh, i will say this if I were to write, if I were to do something like that, if this is what you're expecting, you're going to get something about like that. Is because it, it's a is much it, bigger but, subject but than you think. When you, when you talk about how much bigger it is, right? I mean, when we think about it, what is it? Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead. I was just going to say, why, why is it so much bigger? Like, yeah. Uh, like my, my understanding of what you need to do is, okay, you, you take a look at the storage and compute requirements, the operating systems you need to put out there, your workloads you need to put out there. What else is there to it? Like, mm -hmm. I know that's an overly simplistic perspective, right? But like, okay, I could see it growing from here well, to the, here, but why, why is it this? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, talk about any workload whatsoever and what you could do with it, right? When you start going down this rabbit hole of cost, there's this whole idea of, first of all, well, does it run in less than 15 minutes? Well, we should put that on Lambda, so we're going to pay per millisecond of spin time versus running a freaking virtual server. And then what if you just said, well, we've got to run it as a virtual server. Okay, that's fine. Does it have to run all the time? Or can you do something like buy a reserved instance, which is going to save you money depending on how long you reserve it for and how much you pay up front? Oh, there's also Spot. Spot is basically where you freaking um, bid on reserve space that Amazon isn't currently using. Let me tell you a flippin' dramatic, since you brought it up, Neil, an absolutely dramatic story on that front. Um, it's been years since it happened, but Novartis was doing something called uh, computational chemistry, and mm -hmm. my degree's in organic chemistry. I can talk about it for two seconds. <laughs> Here's the idea. Here's a molecule. You are looking for this molecule. Why? Because this molecule and this molecule, they run together, they shut stuff down. With cancer, if you can do that, you can save people's lives. So here's where Novartis was. They had a couple of middle, a couple of million compounds they needed to figure out. Could any one of these possibly stop this darn cancer? There, and matter of fact, for anybody who doubts what I'm about to say, I challenge you, go on YouTube right now, go to Novartis, 
Look up CTO. You should be able to find his uh, his talk on this thing. Your jaw is going to drop. He was projecting for the data center build. Oh, uh, okay, Neil. Let's Neil. Okay, Neil, come at me here, man. What does a data center need to have? Give me all the stuff it needs to have. Uh, all the stuff: servers, racks, power generators, stuff. cabling, people, cooling, cooling, security. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Network, so secondary figuring, network, secondary power. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then here's the question. I'm gonna get back to it in a moment. What were they trying to do? Were they trying to own a data center? Nope. That's not what Novartis does. They try to save people's lives and make them better. That's what that pharmaceutical company is doing. Luckily, they had a, 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 the, the projection was $40 million to build the data center and get all up and running. They had a partner. It wasn't AWS. They had a partner that said, let's take this to AWS and see if we can use spot instances. So what they did was is they bid on Slack space is what they did. So if you look at the run through the day, and I'm going to try to draw a graph here on the screen, okay? <laughs> so here's the day. As people stop using the servers during the day, all this space is Slack. All this space up here, everybody is Slack. Yeah, so everybody yeah. out there on cyber security see this space? These aren't being used. So what AWS does is they let you freaking bid on it. I have seen stuff that says you can save 90% off of your projected balance. Here's what they freaking did at the end of the day, man. And I'm not making it up. I challenge anybody to go look. The job ran in nine hours. I think they found three or four compounds and AWS charged them a little over $4,000. Wow. 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 So to your, to, to the question, is it deeper than that? you damn right it yeah. is. It's because it's not only what you buy, but how you buy it. Oh, where it flipping sits. You do but, not. But hold on, 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 hold on. Is is that? I mean, what type? Are there any security issues, resource issues, data leakage issues, usability issues with using that Slack space on those EC2 on those instances? Nope. Because what you've got to do is it goes right back to this idea of financial operations. They need to be smart enough to go. This particular workload right here, if it shuts down, it's okay. It's not on a schedule. Think of it this way. You've got to do a weekly report based on data that's finished on Sunday. You've got five days to finish it. Yeah. Five days. Yeah. That is a perfect call for doing a spot bid in AWS because you're going to get it done in five days. But it does mean that, for example, you've got to write stateless applications. Mm. So when it's done running and these things go away, because what AWS does is they send a signal to your EC2 and basically say, your virtual server, sorry, everybody, your virtual server and say, two minutes, you got a two minute warning. In two minutes, you're going to be shut down. So you have to ele ele elegantly shut down, save off that workload. Wow. Sh push it back to a bucket, push it back to a database. Folks do it all the time, man. It's wow. absolutely brilliant. And that's what I'm saying. It's not that simple. You're just not freaking buying a server anymore. This is, oh, this is what I've told people before. My degree's in chemistry, man, organic chemistry. I've had the physics, I've had the calculus. The class that kicked my butt was painting. I couldn't stand it. And the reason I couldn't stand it was there was no right answer. Yeah. It was like art. I mean, it was art. That's what cloud is. Cloud and a lot of it's ways exactly is like art. <laughs> so, so let me let me ask you something. Yes, it's Brooklyn art. <laughs> so, so let's ask something from an art perspective then, because um, you, you brought up data centers, you brought up what's involved in a data center and things like that. Do you see the end of data centers in cloud? Do you mean the use of data centers by cloud providers or no? The use of data centers, centers by, by enterprises. No, I don't. I see. I see them. I see them retaining a small workload still on prem. I still see it. Um, to be honest with you, the number of workloads that I've ever heard of coming back from being put on in the cloud and going, oh, that doesn't work, and bringing it back is well below ten percent. And I mean, well below ten percent. Don't even stop at seven. I'm just going to say below ten. <laughs> but as for but as for folks getting rid of their data centers. Um, that's a tough one. I don't see a lot of people doing it. I will say I see more organizations starting up that will never have a data center. Ooh. I see that more than anything else. 
just organizations. That's what just, I see. Stri strictly go straight into like a cloud first mentality and just that's the only thing that they've got. Absolutely. Because in this market, if you want to go fast and you want to innovate and you want to get your product and service out there, you've got to go fast. So you've got two choices. You do what Novartis did and take a, you know, a year to build a data center or in a year, hey, you're on cyber insecurity with Neil talking about your awesome product because you did a push-up challenge. <laughs> so, so that's how you do it. Cloud is it's it's tough to deny its capability. It's really tough to go, this is nonsense. It really is tough when you can do stuff like that. And the key to it is this: the democratization of flipping technology. I couldn't get to a database like that. I can do it now. I can do it today, brother. Yeah. No problem at all. Couldn't do it before. I can do it with cloud. So, so no, another question came in from Fasochi Actual. Um, I have a feeling we're gonna we're gonna roll right into a lot of audience questions today. I can see them like just crushing through chat. Um, what is something you wish you knew before getting into cloud? <laughs> um, something I knew before I got into cloud. Um, cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew it before I got cloud. into it. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud, I, 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 you know, I, I tell I tell you what I wish I knew before I got into cloud. I wish I would have known and understood. This is going to sound very specific. Containerization better. Okay. I wish I would, and, and I, I cannot go into details. Sorry, just in case. Hey, friends at legal over at Amazon. <laughs> anyway, um, I can't go into it, but I wish I knew more about containerization. And I'll tell something something to everybody in your audience. Something I wish I, I've worked on my whole career. I wish my 101 was stronger. I wish it was stronger because when you get to the cloud, your 101 skills will come to the fore. Like, do you really understand good coding? Do you really understand smart database management? proper database stores, you actually understand those things. Because when you get to the cloud, all your games and shenanigans, it's like it just gets put in the shot light of day and you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, you don't know what you're doing. So between those two, I, I can't explain containerization, but the 101 game, having your stuff straight, that is one of the most important things you need to have together. Well, and it's, I wanna kind of hit on this too, because you and Tracy have similar backgrounds in the sense that you were both developers. Uh, beforehand and you've brought up development quite a lot just in the last you know you know few minutes that we've been doing this stream how close is that relationship between development when you're doing cloud work i mean it, it sounds like when you when you and tracy explain it it sounds way closer than it does over on the cybersecurity side oh it's so much closer it's so much closer because the things that we have wanted to do for years as developers we are now enabled to do it much much more um the, the idea of creating what we call, there's a type of architectural pattern. I, I encourage everyone out there, if you've never heard of it, write this down. I want you to go study this and understand it. It's called evolutionary architecture. It's the idea that your uh, architecture can evolve over time to a predetermined goal. But to do that, you've got to be able to break up. You can't have big monolithic code pieces. You've got to be able to break it up. And when you start talking about cloud and the availability to run serverless compute engines like Lambda and AWS, we can finally do these things quickly, easily, efficiently. I can go out and I can grab those resources much faster than I could before. So as a, I, I will say to you this, as a developer, in a lot of ways, I have been absolutely set free by the cloud, mm. by the th things I've been able to do, by the fact that I can grab, you know, I can spin up a machine learning model, grab the data out of it, and stick it into something. Oh, let me freak you out. As a developer, you can call that machine learning system that's watching those cameras that have been looking at that bypass. I can quickly, using a Lambda, and write just a little bit of Python code, grab other stuff, and before long, I can start predicting traffic accidents. If that sounds like that's made up, it's not. Somebody's doing it right now. 70% accuracy within 15 minutes. Wow, wow. So, and the reason is because those developers can go so darn fast. So, they can so, implement, they can test, they can fail, and they can fix it. So so following up apparently on the containerization stuff, Angry Amoeba um, says, would you learn Docker or Kubernetes or both? Uh, mm. <laughs> I want to say both, but I'm going to lean you towards Kubernetes. I'm going to lean you towards the Kubernetes. I really, really am. 
Um, the orchestration of Kubernetes as an art and a science in and of itself. And the cloud providers are trying to give you more capability in that area where just anybody can use Kubernetes. You can't replace a great Kubernetes engineer, just like you can't replace a great database engineer, just like you can't replace a great security person. They've got a lot of great tools, but at the end of the day, that human is going to always outdo those machines, I believe. So between the two, I would be looking at Kubernetes and really understanding it and then understanding what the cloud offerings are and how you can do it better yourself. How do you, how do you what, seek it? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. No, go, go, go ahead and finish your thoughts because I want to circle back to Docker versus Kubernetes and kind of start to segment why you would pick one versus the other. But go ahead. Neil. No, no, no. You uh, go answers. first. You go first because I was going to go after Docker and Kubernetes. I was going to say what okay. does the future look like. So you go first. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, to your question, the reason I would go Kubernetes over Docker is because you know Docker in and itself to learn it is not that big a deal. We can usually pick it up pretty fast, understand it. We can start using it. No big deal. Kubernetes is a big thing. It's an art and a science. I mean, it has a a controlling board uh, and all the big major companies are on it. It's just a big technology. So with Docker, you can tend to pick it up, learn it, really run with it pretty fast. Kubernetes is a completely different beast in my book. Completely different. I used to be on, a matter of fact, I used to be one of the, uh, um, not under my name. So anybody who was on the thing who's looking for Brooke Sanders, one of the original contributors, that's not the <laughs> name I went under. Um, what, Neil, you know as well as I do that w when you get your security, what's say, do you go by any other aliases? No. No. No, I don't. And that way, just keep it easy on yourself yeah, because yeah, you're, you yeah. know, doing the right things. Yeah. But when they switched from uh, C++ to Go, I kind of dipped out. I was like, I I'm not learning Go. C++ is the way to go. You guys go on. But uh, to answer your question, man, it's just such a big subject. There's so much you can do with it. So many uh, companies are using it. That's the way to go. Absolutely, even with the cloud implementations. Would you would you call would you call Kubernetes the enterprise solution? So if you're looking for your job in corporate world, focus in on the Kubernetes. Docker's great for Absolutely. putzing around, project work, startups, things like that. But if you're looking for a job, right, Kubernetes is where to go. Right. Docker's the sort of thing like um, like if you need to scrub a bunch of documents and somebody writes a really fun, uh, awesome document parser. And you want to make sure it runs on every my machine, Docker. Throw it in a container, push it out to everybody. But the big corps, they're using Kubernetes. And it's used all over the place. And you're and that's the thing. I would I would rather if you're if that's a technology you're interested in, I would rather you learn Kubernetes because it's going to put you in a much better place going down the road to get on the radar of the companies that are using it and using it at the super pro level where you can really learn something. So it sounds like you've so already if you, if you do learn Kubernetes, is it Pretty simple mm -hmm. to say. Okay, I, I now I now have to pick up Docker, but it all of Docker uh, functionality would be similar to things that I've already learned in Kubernetes. You will, you will learn Docker. You will learn Docker accidentally by learning <laughs> Kubernetes. One, okay. Really, Kubernetes depends on Docker, so you're really just going to pick them up. So really that Got question, it. which one should I use, this one or that one? You could do just containerization with Docker, but this is going to happen with yeah. Kubernetes. You're going to get it. both. It's going to happen. So 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 I, I I you've railed on Go, right? You were like, I you guys, you you kids go ahead and ha go have fun with your Go. Um, if you had to look beyond Kubernetes, um, you know, what what kind of looks interesting on the horizon from a containerization perspective? What do you think is going to be kind of the the next one to pick up and catch traction? I think the thing that's really going to catch traction is when one of the cloud providers really nails the automation of Kubernetes very, very well. In this particular, and this is going to hurt my soul <laughs> really bad. Microsoft's doing fantastic. Ooh, oh, that whoa, oh, whoa, that whoa, whoa. Mm. I brought you on this stream because you were cool. I thought I was cool, but the problem is, is the director of content showed me Kubernetes on Azure and I had to go, yeah, that's awesome. That's how you do it. Wow. Okay, that's really? how you play your guitar where, where, on your MTV. Where was the miss on that? It's, it's, it's just because, um, AWS behind the scenes is doing a terrific job with their, with their EKS elastic Kubernetes service. It really is good. But here's the thing. Um, there's a little bit different philosophy between Azure and AWS. Azure is kind of the thing of, we want you to get up and going and let's get you going. 
Okay. AWS is always going to say, we want you to get there too, but we want you to be able to get up under the hood and fiddle around if you want to. Mm. And you've got to get up under the hood and fiddle around a little bit to make it the way you want. So if you want to get going quickly with Kubernetes is this, and that's the thing, man. Are you really looking future at companies who say we need to be using Kubernetes, but I want to do it the way where I've got to fiddle under the hood or God darn it, get this thing up and running. Wow. Wow. People are going to want to get it up and running. So it's, it's more of the easy button. It is. It is. And I would say to, and I would say to both uh, Azure and AWS, uh, watch it. All right. So, that, so speaking that of Google Monster is working on it. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to some of those uh, a little bit because I got a couple of questions on that myself. But it looks like Stuns and Roses is kind of picking up on that trend. He says, "What's the biggest difference between the cloud providers? Is it the management layer between the provided service and what you're responsible for?" It can be. It can be. Um, AWS will get you now. AWS is not going to let you get down too low. None of them will let you do that because at that point, what's the point of the cloud? You know, if the sucker breaks, it should be on their. It should be their problem. Mm -hmm. um, it's, so there's not a big difference there. I do see differences in how um, the ease of use comes out, but the ease of use is not because one's easier than the other one. It's honestly because AWS lets you fit a little bit more under the hood to kind of tune it the way you want. Where Azure's more like, let's get this thing going, and it goes back to the philosophies of those companies. AWS and you. Amazon has always believed in, let's get the MVP, the minimal viable product out to our customers. And that's day zero. And at day zero, we start innovating like crazy. We mm. deliver outstanding products to our customers. That's why when you look at sort of the prim and the polish of things, why, you know, Apple looks so darn polished out of the gate. They work crazy to make this thing polished, where AWS is, is, let's get it out there quick, let's make sure it's a great minimal product, and then we're gonna listen to our customers from there, what they say, and we're gonna innovate on what they're saying. I think Azure, Microsoft fits right in between there. They put a little more spit and polish on it before they release it, so it makes it a little bit easier to use. And that's one of the biggest differences I see between the providers right now. What When you when you look at those providers, does it, outside of market share, market share aside, just uh, across the board, if you had to rack and stack them, how would you rack and stack them? Oh, AWS, Azure, GCP, OCI. So you'd still keep still keep AWS OC at the top? Oh, I'd still keep AWS at the top. I really, really would. Um, I'm sorry, they're freaking fantastic, man. <laughs> I mean, the stuff, the stuff, unfortunately, that the I have- The lawyers are happy with you now. They just, they just hung up. <laughs> They're, they're good. I'm glad they they, they, they just I'm left the stream about two minutes ago. It's like, okay, yeah, no, he's good. Now that the lawyer, <laughs> yeah, now the lawyers are gone. I can spill my guts about the real. No, no, exactly. Oh, now I now have, tell us the truth, I Brooks. Have, what do you I think? Have, yeah, ex I wish I could. I wish I could. No, honestly, goodness, that order was correct. I'm not making that up. That order was absolutely correct. Stuff I can't say, absolutely, I think puts AWS far and away above. Okay. Yeah. They're just flipping outstanding they're outstanding in the way they've approached things so the transparency so, so microsoft, all that stuff. microsoft comes to you and says brooks what are the three things that we could do tomorrow to put us on equal footing as aws or, or push us you know over the top of aws what would you tell microsoft i would say uh you need to um man that's a good question you're going to have to keep up with the a, a, first of all, keep up with Amazon's pace of innovation. First of all, do that, which means you're going to have to hire more people Two, train better. Gosh, darn it. Train <laughs> better. That's one of the best things you can do. Train better. And three, um, and honest to goodness, this is more of a marketing trick than anything else than something they can do better. Give people the ability to get into your cloud and play with it without running up a charge mm. or not much of a charge because that's what AWS did brilliantly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have I read I read some knucklehead article. I'm telling you, man, the older I get, yeah, like you said, it's it, okay, it's great. It's old guy Wednesday. Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> I start looking at kids that and I hate to say, I'm sorry. Hey, anybody in their twenties out there, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you a kid, but I'm 30 years older than you. I'm sorry. <laughs> But <laughs> it's just going to happen. <laughs>
I don't remember what the hell I was going to talk about. I just went off on a rant about age. <laughs> All right. isn't, isn't that really the definition yeah. of Old Guy Wednesday, there, though? There you go. Right old, there. The, right, that's, old Guy that's Wednesday, what you need to everybody. Know. Old Guy Wednesday. We The old guy exactly. forgot what he was going to say. His, uh, I completely wait a minute. forgot what I was going to say. Uh, his his no, Alzheimer's no, no. has no, kicked look, in. <laughs> Man, these kids these days with their flip phones. <laughs> No, 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 no. I read an article in the in the kid's face. Oh, I said it again. The young man's face was there, and he made some ludicrous statement about how AWS needs to do better to stop people from accidentally running up bills. And I'm like, you noob! It's called a billing alert. Okay, they. It's one of the simplest things that they tell you to do right up front is put an alert in there to blow your phone up when you go through a simple thing. However, here's the one thing I would tell anybody on this channel right now. If you set up a billing alert, set up three billing alerts, okay? So if your maximum allowable budget is 20 bucks, you need an alarm at 15, 17, 50, and at 20 bucks. Here's why. If you only set one billing alarm in AWS, it's gonna go off when you're at a party, when you're hanging out <laughs> with your friends, when you're playing slap bass. That's, what you're, that's when you're gonna get it and you're go, yeah, I'm gonna get to that later. It's not going to call you again. He's done with you. He's on about his business. So was your client. Yeah, yeah, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka -ching. yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave you a chance exactly. to stop that bill. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, he gave you one chance. So anyway, poor kid, poor young man says that. Yeah, and I'm like, no, you could do something about that. That's something I wish Microsoft would really make clear yeah. to people who want to go into the cloud for the first time. Say, we're going to give you like a six months almost no hold barred getting into the cloud and play around. And I, this is something, speaking about something else, I wish AWS would do more for the cybersecurity people mm. to give you special accounts to let you absolutely go insane with penetration testing. Because if you penetrate, for example, if you have an AWS account and you didn't do penetration testing, you even though technically you don't have to, I would recommend anybody call them first. Yeah. Let them know what you're doing yeah. because they have AIML out there on the edge that's watching your stuff. They can see that pattern. They know what that pattern looks like, and they'll come after you. They'll shut you down. Wow. So for goodness sake. Oh, and, and don't even do it from in cloud to a different <laughs> part of AWS. Ooh, that's a special day for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, you know, I think on that one, you know, I, that's something I really wish they could do that I think would change their game. Really, but that would okay, be what, what, what could AWS do better to solidify their position? The lawyers aren't listening, Brooks. It's okay. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to ask you about multi cloud, but <laughs> oh, oh, see, see, that's what I'm saying. Uh, that's something I can finally talk about that I used to not be able to speak about. I wish AWS would go ahead and stop the we're the only game in town story yeah. and just go ahead and say, and, and embrace and say, look, if you want to use GCP, if you want to use Azure, if you want to use OCI, fantastic. We're going to help you do it. We'll show you how to do this properly. But now on the other hand, if they don't want to do it, fine. Another organization I know will be happy to show them how to do it. <laughs> but the point being, I think that would be a good thing for them to really go out there and embrace. It really, really would. So, so Net Frazier wants to know what language do you use for automating the setup of your servers? Uh, Python. Period. Dot. End of discussion. Yeah. Oh, you can use other stuff, and I have. You're gonna be right. You're, you're gonna be right in Python. And then, if, <laughs> as far as you, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me, let me, let me answer that question because he may have because that that person may have been asking a, a different question too. Python for automation. If you've got to do scripting, I'm going to be an Ansible. Mm. And as far as infrastructure as code, you're going to be wanting to use YAML. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't have a chance to solidify exactly what you're talking <laughs> about from, from language wise. Python, Ansible for other type of scripting activities for using Chef and Puppet. And then finally, if you're doing infrastructure as code, I want to see you use YAML. There you go. Uh, Cyber Lola, following up on your pen testing one looks like, says cloud pen testing seems a very interesting area. Do you see it as a growing skill and training for it would mean becoming proficient in all major cloud vendors? Uh, yes. 
Yes. Now, understand proficient. See, this is one of the reasons why I started sweating bullets when you were doing my introduction, because <laughs> everybody says, somebody's a cloud expert. And I said, really? Show me this fruitcake. I want to meet them. <laughs> because if you go into the console of any cloud provider, you're like, so you're an expert on all this stuff, my friend? <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not even close. So to that question right there, uh, Cyber Lola, yeah, you're going to need to know you're going to need to understand their security. You're going to understand how they're set up and stuff like that and how their networking works. And I will say this to you. If you were to go down the road of, say, you know, um, uh, 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 getting your uh, getting certified as a penetration tester, really understanding that knowledge, staying with people like Neil who are going to send you in the right flipping direction, for goodness sakes, um, and then understanding the cloud providers, their networking, and their security, you will be invaluable. You absolutely will be invaluable and you will get snapped up. Yeah. So yeah. follow up to that question, though, um, would you recommend to Cyber Lola saying, hey, uh, go learn AWS, go learn how to pen test that. And when you are proficient at that, then start extending into Azure, into G, uh, GCP, et cetera. Absolutely. Absolutely. What I would say, what I would say to Cyber Lola is this, I would say, you know, Go over there, learn the basics of AWS. I would suggest at least you have what they refer to as their architectural level uh, certification. So it's not the lowest where you just become proficient in the language of cloud. It's the next one, the next one up. They do have a security certification. Eh, it's not bad. It's pretty tough, but that usually is enough. Do the same thing for the other cloud providers. Mm -hmm. But going back to what you said, because it's exactly right. Understand that, get that solid basis for any cloud provider, get your pin testing uh, skills together, then go to the next one. Because as you go to the next one, you're going to take 85% of what you know and use it over there. Yeah. Then you're going to take 85% of that and go to the next one. And then holy heck in the job market, once you step out with those sort of skill sets, <laughs> you will be invaluable. So, so Lord have mercy. Cyber Lola has a follow-on looks like, does pen testing cloud have any similarities with network pen testing? Um, maybe, maybe stupid question, but I can't help thinking no. there are. Oh, it absolutely does. It, it has at, at its most basic roots. It's exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same concept, except you've got to understand what these cloud providers may also be doing. For example, if you attempted a stunt where you were going to try to, um, and I'm not the biggest, uh, cyber, uh, hacker type person. So Neil back me up here or, or catch yeah. me if I'm running a weird yeah. direction here. If you were trying to do something on a particular server, like trying to penetrate it, and you were generating a lot of activity, and I can't get into how this works, but if you muck with somebody's account or an, your target account in a certain way, AWS will actually, no, I can't say that. <laughs> they will do something very slick. They will do something amazingly slick. And you can learn about it in the class. It's not classified, by the way. It's not just, it's something I just don't want to talk about here. They will do something. You can learn about it if you get trained properly. They're going to do something with that network adapter. And you need to understand that as a penetration go, ha, I know what just happened. Mm. I know what they just did because it's going to change the way you do that. Not to mention the fact that um, there's all sorts of freaky things that you, you can do with a, with a virtual server. Like if I detect a penetration attack going on, I could literally programmatically, and think about how weird this is, detach the network adapter from that machine and plug it into another one. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have even known I've done it. Yeah. I mean, the same Mac, the same iPre, you didn't even know I did it. Suddenly you're talking to it's, a completely different it's, it's, system. It's old style. So you've got to have that basic skill. It's it's old style. It's the same way we would do DNS black holing and stuff like that back in the day with firewalls and, and routers and domain controllers. You know, you're just doing it faster and better scripting wise and programmatically in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Com bomb Adil. See, I went slowly on that one this <laughs> time. Um, apparently, it's a <laughs> it's a Hobbit reference. I don't know if either of y'all got that or not. Uh, it says YAML over JSON. What's your reason? AWS acts like it prefers JSON and accepts YAML as a secondary. Exactly. Spot. Well spotted. I recommend YAML for one reason. It is the most pedestrian reason in the world. Readability. Mm, That's it. Mm. That's the only reason. I prefer JSON, particularly as a software developer who uses Python, because Python 
loves to eat JSON and mm -hmm. emit JSON. I'm a huge fan, but I will be honest with you. Um, I have seen more and more organizations, companies want YAML for readability because this is what I'm saying more and more, uh, Com, is that uh, those templates are not owned anymore by engineering. They're not owned anymore by the developers. They're owned by y'all in cybersecurity. That's who owns this stuff. So that when you come to me and you say, I need you to validate, uh, validate this network you put up, I'm not going to do the stupid thing that we used to do for years and give you a Visio diagram. Mm -hmm. is, is that thing even accurate? No. But if I put it into infrastructure as code and I give it to you, that's what was implemented. And that's why we prefer to, or some companies prefer to see YAML because of readability. That is the only reason, Com. That is the only reason. If you're more comfortable with JSON, for goodness sakes, go with JSON. Don't even hesitate. Go that way. But don't be surprised if you hear people say, can we see this in YAML? Is, is it, that, that's good to know because I think, I think most folks are used to the YAML conversation or, or to the JSON conversation, especially when dealing with Python and things like that. Um, yeah, Josh, yeah, just it's so much easier. With Josh, Python. Josh, Cyber Learner says, "Question: uh, Is there any tech, uh, security technologies related to the cloud, such as SASE, etc., that are are trending and coming in the future? And can you just uh, real quick do a thirty second for folks who are listening who may not know what uh, uh, secure access service edge technologies are? You do it. <laughs> I'm terrible explaining SAS. I am terrible. Uh Take it, man. Uh, we'll Take say it. we'll save that one for another stream. So does that mean then that you don't okay, want to you don't want to answer that one for because you don't know any you you're, you're terrible with understanding what the trends might be for the future? I I will say this as far as trends go, um, what you're what you should be looking at more and more should be the use of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. What? No, God, that's where that's it's going. that's the second time <laughs> that's the second time you said something stupid on this stream. That's the second time you've said something stupid on this stream. Why? Okay, what, let me ask you do, this. Do you really do you really believe in that sh stuff? We're we're about to get a Neil soapbox. Oh, uh, you're about to get a Neil soapbox oh, so oh, bad. Oh man. Ooh, ooh, here we go. Let me see if I can set off this fire. Hang on one second. <clears throat> let me find my matches. Um just re just attackers. repeat machine learning three times in a row and you'll you'll be there. <clears throat> right, right. Um Dumb hackers do dumb things, and they do things repeatedly in a dumb way, which means it's a freaking pattern, and you can get them. Now, the problem is Neil. Neil is the problem, because he's the human being. I have been my, saying this for years. My, my, wife, like, you have no my, idea. my wife just told me that today. It's okay. <laughs> Brooks, you are a godsend. Thank you. Neil. Thank you. Neil, Thank best, you, best ever. Cyber insecure. <laughs> Thank Best you. No, seriously, ne Neil is the problem because Neil is the one who knows what the knuckleheads are doing and is going to go in a different direction and is going to blow up my freaking ML <laughs> security model. So, yeah, I can't defend that. I cannot defend that. I really can't. But here's the thing. If you can get a good enough model together, particularly one that understands like the antecedent type stuff that we uh, sometimes call it, where it's, don't look for this pattern. Look for when you don't see this pattern. <clears throat> That's when I want you to get upset, machine. That's when I want you to get upset, robot. In that case, that sort of thing for security becomes really, really, really important. Now, does that take away the cyber the, the cyber security people? No, not at, not at all. Because it's not long before. Okay, we've got the script kitties out of the way. Mm -hmm. Now we've got to really worry about the bad actors. Now we can just focus on them. So that's the one technology I would see coming. What more what into is the it? Cloud, look, look, we had it doesn't we, obviate. We we had somebody very very famous on on the stream several several months ago say AI is nothing more than a bi binary decision maker, right? What 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 do sure. you what do you truly believe? You know, and 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 you know, listening to some of the AI, you know people that are out there and the ML people that are out there. And I rail on, on Jeff and other vendors like Carbon Black all the time because they, they, they over-marketize AI and ML almost every chance that they get. It's almost like they're getting paid a, a million dollars per use of AI and ML in their marketing. Like, like what, do you really, <laughs> what do you really think AI and ML is going to do in the security space that, that is going to make it so revolutionary? Because like, here's, here's the thing, I'm, I'm skeptical as you can tell. 
I th- honest to goodness, this is this is my 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 view of is it of this for simple attacks, for regular attacks, for the basic stuff. Let the robots go. Let the robots go. Do it. I would. I don't want. I don't want Neil Bridges and his advanced team that he's put together dealing with the day to day knuckleheads. Let mm-hmm. the robots do that. They're great for that. Let them go do that. That undifferentiated lifting. Mm-hmm. That you had to do every day dealing with mm-hmm. the rudimentary attacks and 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 making them go away. Let the robots do that. That's fine. I want you, when the things go <laughs> really bad, to be clear to be able to handle that problem without going. Okay, we got to worry about all this rudimentary crap happening. That's the sort of thing I've seen before. But is when you say it like that though, and and I and I love playing playing this card out, right? I'll, I'll definitely pull the old guy old guy Wednesday card out on this one. Is it sounds like you're just talking about automation? If this, then this. If it's a script, if it's a script, Kitty, do this, right? What is machine learning? It's it's well, it's, it's, that, it's that's it's, all it it's is. Automation no. at an insane level. It, it, it is it is doing that, but it's got a memory. It's like oh, but you did and this it, last time, and, so it, yeah. And it, can, and it can improve the pattern and it can learn on exactly. the pattern and it can take other, you can take other input and adjust the decision it makes based on other things that it's learning. So it's, it, it is just decision learning, but it's next level decision learning. It really, really is. And again, if that's great for the simple stuff. Yeah. And so I think as far as security goes, that's where it would be. Okay. Uh, Dev Null Zen, uh, he's a he's our resident cloud uh, lover. He he loves a lot of a lot of the cloud stuff here. He's he's yeah. been dying he's been dying for a uh, for a cloud person to come on stream for a while. <laughs> Says, uh, is it worth yes, getting? Dev. <clears throat> is it worth getting AWS <laughs> CCP or sk- skip straight to the solutions architect associate? Skip, skip. Go straight to, go straight to architect. You're going to learn CCP is about learning to speak in a boardroom and not say stupid things more than anything else. Okay. <laughs> right? hey, that might be right? really valuable. Dumb. <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, if, if don't, Dev, don't, Dev, don't let, let me just talk to you. Okay. Just forget the other two. If you know the language, just go get the architect. Yeah. Very good. Get off the flipping screen. Hey Dev, what's going on? Look, no waste of time. Just go get your architect, man. You, 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 I'm sorry. I said, man, I'm so sorry, person. Um, just go, go get it. You'll you'll do fine, if, especially if you've been working with the cloud for a while. You understand the language. You understand the basic concepts. You already know that certification. In fact, if you have been working with it for a few months, I would almost challenge you, just go take the, CC, uh, the, the CPE for the fun of it. Just knock it out so you've got it under your belt. But go get the ARC associate. That's where you probably need. Now you've you've railed on CCP with me before uh, about just how utterly useless it is. Yeah, <laughs> just a hair, just a touch. hair, just no, a tad. I, yeah. No. Oh, I'll I'll say this though. I will say this though. <clears throat> that thing I said about what it's for, that is a perfect use for it. If you're not going to be touching the gear, but you've got to listen to the nerds talk about it, <laughs> go get your CPE. Go get the cert. Oh, by the way, for everybody who's going, what are they talking about? That, by the way, is really the definition of sales training. <laughs> like, yes. It's like, yeah. uh, uh, Jeff's everyone Jeff's that wants to go into quad. sales, go get that one. Je- Jeff's over here like, you just said something I understand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, that sounds a lot like what I should do. <laughs> that's, but that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And you know what your salespeople say in the crazy stuff. But honestly, the thing I've seen it more than anything else for. Oh, that's not going to stop us from saying crazy <laughs> stuff. Oh, no. That's so oh, not going to no, stop us. No, 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 no. And if we, hey, listen, I don't knock sales. I had sales save me once. If there's time, Neil, I will tell you all the worst trip report ever. All right. It involved a sales at the very end saving me. So if we got time, I'll do it. No, but seriously, to, to Dev, Go get the ARC Associate. Uh, I bet today, if you've been working with AWS a little bit, you could probably go take the CPP and probably nail it. All right. Cloud Engineer says, AWS also uses Terraform and AWS Cloud Formation and also has SDK for Python. Which is better to focus? (laughs) We got the motorboat on that one. Well, you can literally feel that. Yeah, it's like the definition of a good question, though, right? Like, mm. yeah, and I feel that must not 
waiver from public speaking <laughs> notes about other products. Stick to the no, 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 no don't it, put it to bed. Put it to bed. Kill it. L the lawyers it's left. It's they hard, left man. twenty minutes ago. Shh, they'll be reviewing this tomorrow morning. I know exactly. What they'll <laughs> no, they'll have a freaking script that they'll be reading. Yeah, exactly. Tomorrow. No, I, I would. I would recommend if you're going to spend time on something. Um, Terraform because of the fact that you can take it to other providers mm, yeah, and use it over there as well. I would really recommend if you're going to start with one, start with Terraform. Hey, CloudFormation is great. And for goodness sakes, don't start the nerd fight about what <laughs> infrastructure code really is because I was in the middle of that nerd fight, Neil. It was literally one side of the room saying it's Terraform, it's CloudFormation, and the other side of the room saying, you suck. It's the cloud <laughs> development kit writing in Python to create infrastructure. Were you? Were so you? I, I really would say. Were you throwing? Were you throwing pocket projectors at each other? Oh no no no! I was with I, no no no. Um, here, here's the worst word I'll say all night. I was with the butthole training uh, group, <laughs> and trainers are the worst. We are the worst people in a room. We are obnoxious. We are nasty. We literally sat back and just laughed at them. <laughs> and like, I remember one guy said something, said, you don't know what you're talking about. We were like, he just said, you don't know what you're talking about. He called you an idiot. <laughs> we were just egging it on because wow. it was a brilliant, it was really a brilliant conversation about, is it about declarative languages like Terraform where you say, build this thing cloud, or is it about using this thing called the software of uh, the, the uh, cloud development kit CDK that AWS uses where you use like Python to create your infrastructure. Which one really is the idea of infrastructure as code? It was a heck of an argument and nobody won. But that gets back to your point before where you wish Amazon would 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 understand that there are other choices out there other than itself because, you know, Terraform could be so much more so much more beneficial for people to learn because it is I mean it's it's multidiscipline you can use it in multiple areas. Hey, learn from Microsoft. If you go back 15 years and, and, and sit down with me from 15 years ago, I would have told you the idea of fielding anything other than a Microsoft server was utterly insane. And what is the default server today? Linux. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might want to get on board with the other tech, yo. Yep. Stuns and Roses again comes back to this question. If you use AI and it reacts to TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures, how would it react to attackers changing TTPs or if you have a different threat actor while your AI has been learning a specific TTP? You would be in a world of hurt. <laughs> and you're in simple. Stuns and Roses <laughs> just captured in a question my continued disdain for the AI and ML conversation. Well played. Well played, Stuns and Roses. Well played. The, no, uh, if, if, if you, it, it, if you it, have a It's really got to depend, though. It's... It's a combination see, permutation see, problem. See, here, here it goes. Here we go. Right there. The, the EDR, the EDR guy is going to defend oh, AI it. and ML. <laughs> no, this is a math. This is a math problem. <laughs> Listen, it is. it's a math problem. Listen, AI, AI and machine problem. learning is a hundred percent math. It is a matrix math question, and it's all about is this a combination or a permutation? Does order matter? And and that's why GPUs get used. Why do we use GPUs? Because GPUs graphics is all about that matrix computation. It's all about that stuff. Mm, burn, son. No, the technology. Anyway, um, no, no, Stun and Rose is exactly right. If you have an immature model mm -hmm. and it's looking at the TTPs and it only knows one and they switch, uh, switch uh, tactics, your model's useless. You've got to have a really good model, which leads us down the road of who's going to own the day? The person with the best model. And then what do you do? You offer it as a service and you make a million dollars. Offer it as a service, make a million dollars. Sell it to a VC and make a shit shoot ton of money. Uh, yeah. Octocat, Oc, <clears throat> OK Cat Cat says, if cloud, uh, if cloud markers share grow, I think it makes, if cloud makers share grows, do we think the number of cloud providers will also grow? I think the market is going to tolerate three cloud providers, Max. Well, yeah. then why do you keep bringing up Are Oracle? You, uh, look, every time I mention OCI, I make $5, okay? So my friend gives me $5 every time I mention OCI. No, no, the reason I mention OCI is because despite the fact that it, it's, it's market share is, 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 is not where they is would zero? want it to be. It's below it's zero? Hmm, hmm, 
I'll never remember. You know, one of the things that they tell you at Amazon is don't smack the competitors. It's just bad form. Don't be, uh, tell your story. It's if not smacking. It's not. It's not. It's not smacking the competitors to tell them that they're below zero market share. No, no, no. Well, no, that's the thing. So we never did. So what do we see Andy <clears throat> Jazzy do, the CEO of uh, of uh, AWS, do up on stage? He's got his big ring that shows all the providers and it shows their market share. And he goes, starts going, I promise, that, promise, there's a little red up here. You can't see it, but there's just a little red. And then this animated Larry Ileson kept <laughs> popping up over the <laughs> ring looking, you know, for it. I was like... We can't talk about it and our CEO's up there doing it. What is this? Um, I will say this, though. I think OCI is actually making some pretty decent forays into the uh, public sector and into government. I really do. I mean, I'm sorry, their it, it's going to be use case work. driven, don't you think? Totally it use case driven. Use case driven. It, there's yeah. a lot of projects that are extant out there in the public sector, particularly in the governments, that have relied upon Oracle. They want to stick with Oracle, and so that's the direction they want to go in. Yeah. But then, okay, so back to Larry, your Larry, that was 20 bucks. That was 20 bucks, Larry. But, you owe me 20 now, man. But, but but back to your thing, if the market's only going to tolerate three providers, where's Oracle Three in major providers. Oh. Let me qualify that. Three major providers. We're going to have niche players. You're going to have IBM. You're going to have OCI. You're going to have DigitalOcean. You're going to have those folks out there. And I hate to say this. I may be wrong. And I mean wrong by this. The market may only tolerate two. And GCP better do something. Really? Okay. I'm going I'm I'm to better do something. I'm, I'm going to pick on this one because I, I, I'll i pick on it here in a little bit because this is kind of my high horse that I want to get on with GCP. But CyberKitty says, uh, Brooks loved the Project 615 shirt. I'm in Nashville currently. As someone who is interested in both offensive security and cloud security, do you see one being more interesting, one being the more interesting career field, Roll Tide? <laughs> I've never heard of that offensive security technique called Roll Tide. Uh, Dude, you well, are such a, a, a bad it, sports guy. Come on. I'm literally yeah, the worst sports look, guy ever. You want you want you want to explain Roll Tide? At this point. <laughs> yeah, Roll Tide. Is the uh, war right. chant of the uh, of the Crimson Tide? Okay, the Alabama football team. And is that like just, high tide or man, low tide? That is the high tide, son. The highest tide you can think of. <laughs> that is the tide. Okay. <laughs> Look, man, we pay good money for our athletes. Okay, and they do fantastic work for us every Saturday in the fall. Sometimes so. <laughs> the Clemson Tide has something to say about it. That's okay. Ooh, don't, ooh. Uh, I, I didn't uh, wear my Buckeye I, shirt, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's a totally hey, Cyber, different conversation. Is, Cyber Kitty, I promise we're going to answer your question real quick. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Uh, but and honest to goodness, this is how you prove to people that you're a decent person. I was, um, I, uh, and many of you don't know what this is. If you don't, you just go look it up. I was on the other side of the Oshafalaya Bayou in Louisiana. Okay, which means that should tell you I'm in deep Cajun country at this point. <laughs> and as I, I got to this place, first of all, this place was freaking brilliant what they're doing. I mean, like jaw dropping stuff. OK, I can't. They made me sign an NDA, which pissed me off. But <laughs> what they're doing was incredible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> and as I was and we literally held class in like a welding shop, not making that up. It was a welding shop it was the only space where we had enough room for us all to get together. And the guy told me outside, he was like, look, man, our head, our head guy in there, he's thinking you're going to be some, you know, hippie from like up in Seattle. So, you know, <laughs> get it. and as I go in, as I go in the room, this guy, this big old cage is up there going. And all I can see is in fact, he's like, they sent us some long haired hippie with all these different clothes. I'm not listening to this guy. I don't have time for this stuff. So I just go by his desk. I just. Roll Tide, son. Oh, <laughs> man. It set the whole room off. Everybody's like, yay. Then I looked at him and said, this is the other thing you probably don't know. Um, our head coach used to teach at Louise, uh, used to coach at Louisiana. So is that a good thing say, or a bad LSU, thing? Oh, the hate. The, oh, no, they love their coach now. Ogeron is fantastic. I mean, his interviews are just, and his voice is just gravel. Anyway, okay. Another thanks, story. Th th thanks you for that because, have like, fun in cyber. you could, you could okay. definitely, you could definitely tell I'm a huge fan of all these sportsy things that you're talking about with all the sports paraphernalia that I got sitting the around this, this office. The, you know, sportsy. Oh, yeah. That's sportsy that's things. Excellent. Sportsy yeah. things. Yeah. Sportsy. 
Don't make me, don't make me bring Cyber Spl- Kitty. Don't make me Cyber bring Cyber Kitty started this, okay? It wasn't us. Cyber he was talking Kitty he was talking about rolling okay? up he was talking about rolling up the tide balls mm-hmm. and putting them in the washer. Oh I not. <laughs> don't think so. Don't think so. Don't think so. Um anyway. Oh, by the way, what the shirt is about that he's talking about, this is an organization that sells clothes to help out homeless people. Um, I discovered them when I was teaching in Nashville. Absolutely fantastic organization. So if you're in the Nashville area, <clears throat> oh, go online to their website, order some of their stuff. You'll be really, really um, supporting a fantastic cause in the Nashville area. Um, as far as uh, your question about someone who is interested in both offensive and cloud security, which one you see as being more interesting, I'm going to say cloud security. Absolutely cloud security. Um, with the way it's evolving, with the way the cloud is growing, mm-hmm. knowing yeah. the potential for the market to grow, there's going to be so much demand for it. But I will tell you right now, nothing will enable your career better than the sort of stuff that Neil talks about in terms of you know, penetration testing and sort of stuff like that. That's what separates the, oh, I've learned some stuff in class from this person knows what the heck they're talking about. Watch out. Uh, <clears throat> I obviously don't know anything about Roll Tide, but... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, this is a good one, and, and I'm glad I'm glad uh, yeah. I'm glad my mods were were cognizant enough to push this one back up. I saw this one scroll through chat. This is definitely something I wanted to talk to you about because I I just recently came from Mondelez International, and um the the CIO that they had over there was very innovative, and it was a it was a heavy heavy Azure shop, um and they had yeah. um they had made the decision mid year last year, almost twelve months ago to go multi-cloud, but they cho- chose GCP in this little kind of carry over into the high horse, you know, conversation mm-hmm. I want to have later on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did think it was an interesting choice to go multi-cloud. And so I think typical, typical Seminole, um, you know, comes through with this one says, why would a company go multi multi-vendor? I think one of the main reasons any company should go multi-vendor is at least to have a workload in another cloud. So you understand your workload in that cloud provider. Okay. Because, and you know, it's 8.30. I think it's time. Are you ready? Let's do it. Because it goes to this question right here. Let's do it. We can do it. Number number three. My number number three mistake in the cloud. And it goes right to your question, typical Seminole. When you go to the cloud, create a back out plan. Have a way to get out of the cloud and understand it in detail. Don't say stuff like, oh, we'll just pull our data back. You don't know what you're talking about at that point. The idea of going multi-vendor is this. If you're in one particular cloud provider and something happens, and, you know, and it may be something completely out of your control. What, I was going to say, what are, some, what, are some things, what are some things that could happen that, that could cause that? Parlor. Uh, For instance, like, uh, that's an extreme example. May I, but may, like, I, well, may, I, may I speak on that? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, 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 Please. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The, 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 let's, let's ground set for everybody, right? There are no politics in chat. No. So the conversation, no. the conversation no. we're having is strictly information technology. This is tech. Exactly. This is, this is, this is all tech. So no politics in chat. This is speaking spe- specifically about the technological yes. things that happened around that. Yes. Go for it. To drive, to drive that point, Neil, cause you hit it right on the head. Let me make this clear. The call that I got this past fall from a business owner. And this is one of these guys, he owns the business. It's a multi-million dollar business. He's got investors. He was aware of what happened with Parler. What he, now look, when the whole world was doing the whole political thing, when the whole world was talking the politics of it, let me tell you what the business owners heard in their head. They didn't hear the politics. They heard company with $10 million book valuation shut down over cloud EULA, in user license agreement. He calls me and he says, what in the heck am I going to tell my investors mm-hmm. when they ask me, could this happen to us? Mm-hmm. And I said to him, you go multi-vendor. You go multi-vendor right now. And you say, we have another vendor that we understand. Now, listen, the chances of this happening to anyone is extremely slim. And I can't go beyond that. It's extremely slim. It has to be, and there's enough I'm going to say on it. Right, okay? right. Be able to go to another cloud provider. Be able to do it. Know what you have to do to make that happen. Because it may not necessarily be something like that. It could be perhaps that they miss some security review. It could happen. Suddenly they can't support a certain type of workload and you've got to go. Or another cloud provider suddenly can host 
say, a particular type of workload in a particular type of country, and you've got to get over there. Having an understanding of other cloud providers is going to pay off dividends. So go multi-cloud for goodness But sense. real quick, on the multi-cloud thing, though, there, there, it's not just like, <clears throat> hey, go multi-cloud for, for, you know, you know um, resiliency and things like that. There, I mean, you have completely different cost structures. You have completely different cost models. You have completely different infrastructure concerns. Mm -hmm. You have completely different mm -hmm. load mo models. You have completely different architectures. Like, it is it is a, I don't want to call it monumental, but it is a significant fiscal investment on an enterprise to strategically say we're going to be a multi-vendor, multi-cloud environment. It is. It is. And it's worth it. I think it's absolutely worth it to make sure that you've got another workload over there and can work in those other clouds. You know, um, it, it's really strange about cloud. Cloud is a weird transformational thing. It will get into your organization and everything that you've got wrong will suddenly get much worse. And so when you go into cloud, you're going to have that sort of fundamental change. But at the same time, flip and keep cloud in your IT toolbox. Don't let it become the definition of your existence in IT. And for that reason, be able to use more than one tool. Mm -hmm. I mean, we never allowed ourselves to get to a place where we were only stuck with one tool. And where we did, we got screwed. Sorry. So go multi-vendor. For goodness sakes, if it's just one workload, do it. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you two other way, reasons. By, uh, go. Go ahead. No, go, finish, your, no, no, finish the thought. I, I, I thought say, you were done. And a lot of, and you got to be careful with a lot of the vendors because some of them will say we have so many uh, uh, customers that are multi-cloud. Um, if all of your servers and your virtual servers and your databases are in AWS, but they're using Office 365, that's not multi-vendor <laughs> that I'm talking about. No, that's a good way. Yeah, no. that's good. Go, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, no, I was, I was, I was, I was just going to yeah, Jeff. I was, I was just going to add to that a little bit. Uh, you, you talked about what is your exit strategy? Your exit strategy has to be, okay, maybe that other cloud is back to a data center. If and when that becomes some critical enabler for your business, you have to be able to figure out how to do that. And a true multi-cloud strategy allows for you to have those workloads in one or two uh, or all three uh different cloud providers and then move it around accordingly and then pricing like yeah. the other piece i would say is 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 what you're really wanting to do to give a monopoly of having zero negotiating skills to be able to say hey um i have no reason to come back to you and ask for a better price other than I'm going to go through the pain and agony of trying to move my data to another <laughs> cloud. Oh, good luck with that. It is way more difficult than people yeah, think. Yeah. And uh, they know they ha have you over the barrel, period. Yeah. And, and here's the other thing. There's a term that we use in the cloud. It's, it's data has gravity. Mm -hmm. Data has gravity. Put some data in the cloud and watch it grow. There will reach a point where you, for example, you know, uh, one of the things that you can always do with these cloud providers is they're really cool about, you can put as much data in the cloud as you want to and we won't charge you. <laughs> Which sounds like, wow, that's neat. I'm on board. Look, at, go to calculator.aws and look at the charges for pulling data out of S3. Right. And go ahead and run it up to something like petabytes. Go ahead and do that and see what it could do to you, okay? And that's what I'm saying, and that's why, Jeff, what you're saying carries so much weight. It's more than what you think because it's not just, oh, we've got to be able to get to this other provider. We've got to understand it. how much is it going to cost you to get your data out of that one provider? Yeah. Good gravy. This is not that simple. So that's why I say my number three mistake is not having an exit strategy. For goodness sakes, I can tell you for a fact that the number of workloads that have been pulled back from the cloud to an on-prem is way less than 10%. So you're probably not going to do it. But for goodness sakes, understand what you've got to do should it ever happen because I don't want Neil coming at me okay at four o'clock in the afternoon going how in the heck are we going to do this yeah. Brooks because he's going to he's probably going to be Neil you're going to beat me up you're going to expect <laughs> me to understand this and if I go oh we'll just copy it down to the thing it's not that simple yeah. it's not that simple 
get that understanding together right now. It's going to be hard. It's like what you said. It's it's the it's the freaking trouble of understanding what have we got to do to be multi cloud. It is hard work. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to get it for free. Just like you're not going to get for free the ability to put together a plan. And I think that's one of the major reasons why people don't have it, a plan to get out of the cloud. It is a hard plan to put together. They, they, they suck you they suck you into that quicksand and 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 chew you up and take you for all your money greatest mm -hmm. invention ever is the cloud mm -hmm. uh stuns and roses the mvp yes. of tonight uh coming back through with another question says what type of security challenges exist when using an on-prem hybrid cloud model or multi-cloud model if data is encrypted would that cause compatibility issues no actually it doesn't great question stun roses um no actually it doesn't and if you have security people and network people who can put the hybrid cloud systems together, they're fantastic. They are rock solid. They're really, really good stuff. And I can say to the, as a feather into the cap of AWS, Azure, and GCP, they've done a lot on their side to make sure that those things are secure because if that stuff ever got away from them, their, their boat will sink. Mm -hmm. There's just too many people with on-prem, like AWS Connect, to get you from your on-prem up to the cloud. They've made that stuff safe I, and stable I, I think and I, secure. I think when I read that question, though, I, I think I worry less about compatibility issues, um, more so than, you know, architectural, like just, just security architectural design issues. Um, just, you know, the lack of consistency between how architecture is done between the, the different cloud vendors, how security technologies are deployed differently in the different cloud vendors, different uh, mm -hmm. security controls that you that each cloud vendor allows you to implement differently across the board. Mm -hmm. And so you almost have mm -hmm. to it's, it's almost a, a, a labor intensive effort to maintain consistent security controls and security principles at the architecture level more so than it is about compatibility issues at the data layer. It truly is. It really it really calls for a multi-layered uh, uh, security approach where, you know, this is what we're going to do. Now I'm going to pass it off to the AWS, GCP, a, uh, OCI, whoever person, to figure out what is the implementation details yeah. of this particular control. And it's just, yeah, that's the only way you can do it. Or it's just going to blow people's minds. When when we did when we were doing the the Azure to GCP stuff at at Mondelez, we had to use the professional services at Google to help us with that because mm -hmm. to try to convert, you know, you know, uh, you know, a, a multi, almost a hundred million dollar Azure infrastructure into an equivalent GCP infrastructure, there's just no way we had the staff on hand to do that, or the knowledge. Right. It's just too much. Yeah. Right, it's just too much. Yeah. Uh, okay, Cat Cat says, is the INE training going to cover cloud security aspects? Absolutely, absolutely, it's going to. You can count on it. Um, uh, proper security, the proper way to th set things up, and uh, some uh, interesting techniques to ensure that you do. You create, for example correct policies tech tech techniques uh techniques brooks that uh you wouldn't necessarily get from ccp you would not get from ccp no so so so, so just to i just want to tease that one out there right you're going to be able to learn things in the ine cloud or aws cloud class that are not in ccp from a security perspective exactly you heard it here first, exactly. folks. You heard it here first, folks. Exactly. I mean, and now some of the you know some of the stuff is is known, but it's not talked about a lot. Like the the amazing what I call the amazing double negative trick, which is absolutely fantastic. Which says I'm going to let you get into this, and you can't get into anything that's not this. It's it, I, I know. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. I, what I just did. It is like redneck. I am from Alabama, <laughs> so it is a redneck maneuver, but it's a brilliant security technique that we'll be talking about, plus other stuff that's not normally talked about from a security perspective from the vendors. Absolutely. 100%. Typical Seminole comes back, says, question, is it worthwhile to select a cloud vendor to specialize in their environment from the beginning? I would say, typical, what I would say to that is, If I was starting a business from scratch and I was about getting a product to market, absolutely I would do that, 100%. I'd get that thing out there, I want it up and running. Then I would have to backtrack and implement all the stuff that I know is proper security for the cloud. As far as a learner, 
No, I would try to learn multiple vendors. You really need to know multiple vendors these days. I understand everybody's looking for AWS, but there's a lot of people looking for Azure and GCP too. So don't muck around with that one. From a learning perspective, learn many. If you're starting a new business, I would recommend pick one and run, but be willing to make the investment downstream to come back and rectify those issues. And by the way, if you do your architecture right, it won't be a problem. If you do your architecture wrong, it's going to be a pain in the katukas. And that's going to be your indicator. Oh, yeah, you did that wrong, friend. Yeah. Uh, Trip, uh, Trippy Tango says, what's the best way to start learning about cloud? I and E. Oh, hold on. <laughs> um, I would say, honestly, the best, if you just wanted to start learning, like if you want to start learning tonight, one of the best things you can probably do just to get going would be to look at like any of the tutorials you see out there for just building simple things, mm. just really simple things. And that's something that we're going to have a lot of in our material. You're know, like, hey, let's stand up a web server. That was cool, wasn't it? And, and that and that's the thing, uh, Trip, is that um, when you start doing those little simple things, like I want to build my own WordPress site, mm -hmm. and you realize you're building it, you just did that. It's like, wow, I just did that? Yeah, you did. You own it 100%. Don't worry about, you know, Dorsey or Zuckerberg mucking around with your stuff. <laughs> you own it 100%. That's freaking amazing for a lot of people. I mean, okay, it's old guy Wednesday, so let's be old guy for a second. <laughs> There's so many young people out there that have got this idea that anything they do whatsoever is going to be within the confines of this particular social media platform, and it is. If you want to have a voice outside of that, a capability outside of that, Host your own stuff. So to trip to what you're saying, one of the best ways to learn, follow some of these tutorials that are out there on like how to build your own WordPress site, how to build your own, uh, you know, build a solution is what I'm saying to you. Build something that works and then start from there. I would never recommend to anybody, oh, just start learning the basics. Freaking build something. You'll learn so much this, more. This gets back to what we always preach on the stream, you know, you know, to reiterate what Brooks is saying, what we always tell everybody on the stream, what Jeff and I are always tell, what we're always saying in sub chat, what's always getting said in Discord, put your hands on stuff. Just get your hands out there and, and start doing something with it. That is still hands down the best way to learn anything. Uh, Absolutely. Cloud Engineer says, to train for multi-cloud skills, what two providers should I focus and train for? AWS Azure. Still going to stick with that. One and two. Yep. Well, GCP AWS, is a, a d yep. kind of a distant third right now, right? Well, and that's it. So, so that, let's, go, a, let's go ahead and stand on the GCP soapbox and let's kick it around a little bit, right? All right. right speaking, let's go. Speaking, let's speaking go. Of, and speaking of DevNull Zen, I love my moderators. Perfect question push from DevNull Zen. Do you think that Google will start pushing for a larger cloud market share, making it worth training a GCP? No. I'm going to say no. I. I think Google, oh, you're going to go the no route. I think Google has lost. I got to go, yes. I think Google has lost the cloud war. Yeah, okay. You I tell think them that. Personally, I think, yeah. I Go ahead, Jeff. I'm going to shut up for a second. I'm losing my uh, voice anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I just I just have a hard time believing that Google's ever going to say, oh, bummer, we lost. <laughs> like, they don't do that. Yeah, have you not seen them shut down stuff that hasn't made them money? I mean, they've they've shut down services all the time mm -hmm. that they've. Yeah, yeah but I mean, we're they, not we're not talking cloud. We're like, uh, absolutely, they've done that. But those are ancillary. This is primary. I mean, if I don't, if they don't get their, I, I don't know, if 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 they don't get their market yeah, share into it. the, say in, it, Neil. If say they it, don't Neil. get their market share into the twenty percent, I'll bet this shut it down. So, I would bet you they're exactly going to come right. up with some they, flipping ingenious way to make sure that happens. Because they've done it before. They are right now. Yeah, they're right now. They're on the edge. They're on the precipice. They're either going to be a niche. You think they're just uh, they're close to accept. leaving? I, no, I think they're they're at a critical point. I think that's where GCP is right now. They better move now, or it's going to be too late. When you they've talk about their when now. you talk about their niche, the only companies that I've talked to who have enjoyed GCP as a niche are the ML and AI players for the for the data processing that's yeah that's it and so that's and it. i think and i think data science as an industry is still ridiculously in its infancy and and so i don't think that because data science as an industry is mature 
organizations don't understand the value and they're going to continue to invest in Amazon and Azure. And by the time data science becomes a thing, Amazon and Azure will figure out how to do what it is GCP can do. And I don't think that GCP will catch enough market share to be a player. That's my theory. That is a fair, that's a, that is a fair assessment. That is a very fair assessment because given time, Given time, this is what's going to happen. AWS is going to bring down AI, um, AI ML to the user. They're going to make it a service. Mm -hmm. Okay. No math is involved. You're literally going to load up a bunch of stuff. Give me a model. Put the model on my camera. Boom. I'm done. That's where I think AWS wants to take it, where anybody can consume it. Anybody can use it. Google right now, if they don't, They've got to do something to push the compute. They've got to do something to push the database. They've got to do something to push the storage. They've got to do it now or they will be, hey, we're your data science laboratory. And that's going to be the end of the story. So on that same note, Cloud Engineer comes through says, Google Cloud got a deal with SpaceX to implement Starlink. Could this be GCP's chance to get market share? No. No, they're chasing AWS. Yep. 100%. They're chasing it because uh, Je Jeff's already got his he's already got his crap up there, and um, there you go, there you go. Worldwide internet, that's what they want because the next thing they're going to want from that is going to be is going to be the IoT, IoT freaking everywhere. Yeah, hundred percent. And you need worldwide internet to make that happen. Uh, Black Knight sounds like he's, uh, piggybacking off of my, uh, my, my data science thing. So do we see the job market for data science going to boom with the intake of cloud going up as well? No, I don't think I, Brooks, I'll let you answer this one. Sorry. I shouldn't jump in for you on that one. No, no, no. T -t -t take it. Take it. I, I don't take it. I want to hear what you have to say. I mean, here's, here's my take. I don't think data science and cloud are interchangeable. Like, I don't think that, I don't think data science as a career field going up has anything to do with cloud, right? I think it's, it's enterprise adoption and enterprise adoption, I think is based on big data and data lakes, which they're currently doing either in AWS, Azure or on-prem Hadoop, you know, or, or cloud Hadoop instances. And so that's why I said, I don't think that those are, are cloud dependent. I think it's enterprises figuring out more of what they can do on the data analytics, you know, natural language processing, mm -hmm. you know, AI ML space like that. I, I don't think it's cloud cloud dependent at all, Brooks. Yeah. I don't see it going boom either because I actually I see a split in what's going on. There's going to be those people who are kind of pseudo data scientists who are going to be using those software as a service so they can kind of do data science. But anytime I spoke to real true died in the wool data scientists, they're sitting on local Linux boxes running Jupyter notebooks. Yeah. Okay. Or Jupyter yeah. labs running, running pandas and stuff like that. That's where it still is. So no, I, I that's still a big, big thing. And, you know, as much as it grieves me to say this, Neil, I, I hate to say it, the prediction back in the early part of the last decade was that right now, big data would be mature. Yeah. I still don't think we're there. 100%. I think one of the best data scientists in the world, one of the best data scientists in the world, uh, a guy named Michael Jordan, not the basketball player, <laughs> um, he was predicting sometime around the beginning of this uh, decade it would be there, but I, I don't see it coming to fruition. I really don't. It, and... and that's probably a completely different conversation to, to get on a tangent on. Uh, uh, Josh Cyberlearner comes back again and says, in terms of quantum community computing among the three, which one uh, will you think will lead the way and set the future for it? I think, now, now look, gosh, I hate to say this because it sounds like I'm just a big a, uh, just a big Amazon clown. I promise I'm not. Um I think AWS because of their uh, partnership with Regetti. I really do. I think it's if once they get the qubit, qubits up there, they're going to be in really. I know, I know, I know. Everybody's going to come at me and say, "Wait a minute! I thought IBM was on the yeah, uh, yeah. The, on the glide path yeah. to have a thousand qubits." Because once you have a thousand qubits, that's technically the place and when you can start using quantum to really do something. That's true, but you seem to forget how quick AWS can flip and scale. Yeah. They will find a way to scale that capability and it will be fast. So I think in the end, with their partnership with Regetti, they'll get there first. So so back to back to this one, typical seminal here and on the quantum community thing is isn't quantum community computing only at a research level for now, at least a decade plus from now? Yes, I agree with that. Right now they're still trying to work out the math, they're still trying to get the qubit structure worked out. Again, until you've got a thousand stable qubits, 
you don't have a quantum machine you can do anything with. Once you get to the thousand, Sally, bar the doors because your cryptography's gone. You think you gone. think we're you think we're going to see quantum computing more in the cloud space, or I'll I'll pick on the the NSA facility out at uh, Utah where they're building that huge giant on-prem data center. You think they're gonna you're gonna be able to achieve quantum computing on on-prem data center infrastructure first, or in the cloud? In the cloud, because the cloud's going to have more finances to be able to do it. Mm. They'll never be able to keep up with the financial capability of AWS and GCP and Microsoft. They just can't keep up. And oh, by the way, super genius comes out of college, the next great quantum scientist. Who do you think that she is going to go to work for? The NSA? Or do you think she's going to take that hot signing bonus from one of the cloud providers? She's gone, ladies ladies and gentlemen. She is gone. Mm. It's over. They're not going to let her get away. Yeah, they're not going to let her get away. They'll go after her. They'll get her. Uh, Bad at Linux yeah. um, says, is it worth knowing stuff like DigitalOcean, <laughs> Digital Linode, uh, Harioki? In my experience, no. There you go. No. Real, just, real talk, I, people. Off real talk. Cloud, Hey, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. If you're getting started in cloud, don't do it. Just don't do it. Unless you're, unless the people who help you pay your mortgage or your car payment or whatever it is you have to pay for is using one of those, don't do it. Spend your time <laughs> on one of the cloud providers first because that's going to make you more money down the road. Please do that. Look, nobody even got Brooks a beer and he's already like got his feet up on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. My throat's dry. This, this is the, burning up. My, my freaking. This is this is definition of real conversations. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We have hit a yeah, new level this, on real conversations with real like, people. Oh, this is it. Put a cigar. This is put it. a cigar in his yeah. mouth, and he's it's it's done. All right. No number uh, number eighter says, "What is the best way to get your architecture right the first time?" Oh, look. First of all, to everyone on channel. Listen to a certified Amazon public speaker. Never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever tell somebody that they just gave you a good question. Don't ever do it. There's two reasons why. I don't have to explain why. Just don't do it. That's a great question. <laughs> but let me explain why. Um, and it's enumerator, by the way. Providers, uh, sure. That's okay. Enumerator? Sure. sure. Okay. Every one of the cloud providers gives you tooling to help you get this freaking thing right in the first place. AWS, look, numerator. You want to go to, to everybody on channel, everybody on channel. There's a thing on a, in AWS called the Well-Architected Framework, the WAF. It is a white paper, okay? If you're getting into cloud, you need to know that thing. All it is is a list of questions across the five bars. So it's security, compliance, cost, and I can't remember the rest, but it's five, the five pillars that are important to really build smart architecture. And it's just a list of questions. And those questions ask like things like, have you made sure that you have the best cost set up for the particular server. Will that workload run in less than 15 minutes? You go through something like the WAV, you have the best chance of getting your architecture right the first time. Oh, by the way, if you know the WAV, if you really know it, and you're in a meeting, and people are asking about cloud and stuff like that, and you start just throwing out those questions like it's coming off the top <laughs> of your head like you know what you're doing, you're going to look like a freaking genius. I promise you, you're going to look good. So, yeah, to your, to your question, Numeric, yes, you can. The best way to do it is to look like if it was AWS, the well-architected framework. The other providers have similar tools. Go grab it. Use them. It's your best way forward to get it right the first time. Uh, I think that's a good one. I think that's a good one. I think uh, uh, that was a good one. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the mods how many we got left. Uh, get a comment in my ear on how many we got left. Uh, Fasochi Actual says, what's the timeline? For INE cloud course release, starter pass or paid. Uh Brooks, you want this one? No, dude, you got this one. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta I gotta use my INE pads to try to form a fan here, man. So I gotta work on this. <laughs> uh I think what we're doing right now is we're aiming for a fall release <clears throat> right now is what we're aiming at. Um, seeing how Neil's my boss, I hope I didn't say something I shouldn't say because he'll beat <laughs> me up after work in the parking lot um, when I come up there finally. 
but I would say very soon. I would, soon, I would, soon, soon. I would definitely pull the Blizzard answer, and I would say soon, and and I would say that it's yes. gonna, it's gonna come hot, and it's gonna come fast, and yes, and 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 yeah, yeah. Let's leave it at that. I will say this: I, I'm not sitting here swilting in a freaking blanket fortress for no reason. Okay, <laughs> we're working on it right now. <laughs> Actual. <laughs> uh, Sal Salaman Suluman says, what is the government uh, using to safely store their data? I can't believe they're depending on commercial cloud data storage. Um, no details. Yes, they are. And I have to get on my soapbox. I'm sorry, Neil. I have to get on my soapbox. If you want to put me in center stage, go oh, right yeah. ahead. Oh, you know it's going to happen. It's happening. Look. Let me tell y'all something about and, 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 and Suleiman. It's actually a great question. It really is. It really is a decent question because it does show the concern that, as you know, as a citizen, are we really doing these things right? Do they really make sense? I can assure you, that's exactly what they've done. Um, there has been some very smart minds in the uh, in the DoD military who've looked into this. I can't go beyond that, but I can say it's been absolutely brilliant what they've done to ensure that this stuff is taken care of properly. And um, if there's any sort of common sense stuff that's popping up in your head, uh, Suleiman, about well, what about this and what about this, I can guarantee you that stuff has already been taken care of. So they are putting that so stuff in there. And the idea is this. We need to start enabling the warfighter. Enough is enough. Mm. They have a hard enough job. It makes me sick, the idea of a young warfighter having to go over to the sandbox, because I, I used to see it all the time, and realizing we were en enabling them with the sort of technology they needed to do the best job possible. So taking them to the cloud actually gives us more speed, more capability, and the ability to innovate much faster on behalf of the warfighter. So in that particular space, I mean, I couldn't be more proud of what of what the military is doing right now within that space. And they're not doing it because of some sort of, oh, we got to go to the cloud. They're thinking smart, and it's brilliant. And I will say, as a final thing, when it comes to security, um, I have seen the best of the best, and I mean the absolute best of the best. Look into it, and they've all been cool with it. Awesome. So, so I think I think we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and cancel or not cancel. Yeah, I'm not canceling anything. We'll go ahead and um, you know call call that one uh, the last question for the night. Okay. I'll ask uh, I'll ask the moderators to uh, or ask, I'll ask Carmen to go look for a channel for us to raid if there's anybody out there uh, for us to raid. Uh, Brooks, listen. Uh, thank you so much for um, coming on the yeah. stream. Real quick, real yeah. quick, just to summarize everything, will you repeat your top three cloud mistakes that people make yes. for everybody who may not yes. have looked at your awesome video? Oh, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, number one, thinking cloud is only an IT decision. It is not. I can take you up the road right now to Birmingham, let you meet a guy named Trig that works at a company up there. The idea was is he needed to learn cloud to better understand data privacy. Well, it turns out after he got his certification, he caught a major error that he met, they, met, they, were, they were about to make in a rollout of a workload in Germany. Trigg's a freaking lawyer. He's a staff attorney. I'm telling you, when you start enabling departments outside of just IT when it comes to cloud implementation and putting them at the table when it comes to cloud strategy, you will see amazing things happen. Um, number two, get your freaking um, setup right because cloud will make you look bad. All the things that you're doing wrong, this is number two, will show up blinding clarity once you get into the cloud. So as you go there, don't be surprised if some of your cultural issues don't come to the fore. I stood in a room and I literally had this, I think there was, uh, Neil, I think there was about 50 people in there, and they were in three different groups. I'm going to turn the room to your perspective. Mm -hmm. There were some people in the front, there were some people back here, and there were some people back here. And I finally leaned and I said, hey, um, what's going on here? Because I can see a wall. Business, people, mm -hmm. the developers, and security. Mm -hmm. And security was mad at everyone because of cloud. The dysfunction they had at that company grew in proportion when they got to the cloud. And number three, have a backout plan, y'all. I don't care if you don't use it. I don't care if it's never used. I hope you never use it because I think cloud's awesome. But you need to understand where you're at, 
what your situation is, and what you got to do to throw that truck in reverse and back out of that hole just in case you need to. And I'm not going to get into the politics again. You can hear what we said earlier, but it, you need to understand that. I will say that on that one, going to the cloud is a business decision. Yeah. And no business person worth his or her while will not walk into a business situation without having a back out plan. It's Tom foolery not to do it. <laughs> It, it's all about it's knowing Tom your risks. damn foolery. And that's, that, yes. that is a risk that you've got to figure out up front. Yeah. And so many companies are just too lazy, Jeff, to take the time because, oh, this is going to be hard. Well, wait till it gets bad, bruh. Then you're going to be in some trouble. You're really <laughs> going to have a lot to, 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 to pay for. So... <laughs> Brooks, on that just, note, just by, by the way, by the way, it's much beyond three. Everybody watching, it's much beyond three. That was just <laughs> the top three. It goes well beyond that. As if you haven't had enough center stage attention for tonight. Uh, as we are coming up on the top of the hour, I do give my guests uh, more center stage. You get to have more center stage tonight. Um, on behalf of my audience, on behalf of my moderators, Jeff obviously hated having you here because, you know, he likes the attention all to himself. So I'm going to say thank you on Jeff's part already. Sorry, uh, Jeff. Yes, thank you, Jeff. Thank uh, the, you. The, the, yeah. floor, the floor is yours if you'd like to say anything to uh, to the community or, uh, or anybody who, who might be listening today or in future VODs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Y'all, the, the biggest thing I can tell you about the future of tech and where you should be and where you should go in, it's based on any sort of personal thing about where I work now or where I've worked. It's based on my history. Um, this is a commitment to a life of education and teaching yourself and learning and staying at your best. And we're lucky. We're darn lucky because we get to play with the stuff that we enjoy playing with and learn from it. So as you go forward, particularly with cloud, with cybersecurity, or whatever it is you want to do in IT, commit to a lifetime of learning. Get the best training. Don't just learn from the vendors. Get outside the vendors where you can to get that down-to-earth sort of, you know, old man can tell you about the term. <laughs> get that sort of stuff. It's critical. And by the way, for any of you on the channel who are, um, say, in high school right now, maybe about to go to college, if you're thinking about joining the military, I cannot think of a better way for you to begin your IT career than go serve our country. It's one of the most honorable things you can do, and I will guarantee you, you will look back on it and you will be glad and proud that you did. Awesome. For up to the minute cybersecurity news, make sure you follow and subscribe to the Cyber and Security channel on Twitch and YouTube. Also, make sure you turn on those notifications so that you know when we go live.